my background was in government, uh, specifically with the Central Intelligence Agency, and the way I got involved in all of these issues was actually from 9-11. I was, um, I was in Omaha, Nebraska at a military briefing at the United States Strategic Command on the morning of 9-11, so I was not in Washington, D.C., but I will, I think we all remember exactly where we were at that moment, but uh, we were in the middle of this military briefing and another gentleman came in and whispered in his ear that something had happened and he announced that we needed to adjourn the meeting and go into this other room. And we went into this other room with um, video screens and, and the television um, blaring what was going on in New York and just in time to see the second plane hit the World Trade Center. And one of our colleagues had turned to a few of us, and she had been working on counterterrorism, and she said, it's a terrorist attack. It's Osama bin Laden. And I had briefly heard about bin Laden, about you know the bombings of the embassies in, in uh, Kenya and Tanzania in 98, and had followed it a little bit, but was just so struck by her certainty. And I was also struck by the sense that our world would never be the same. And I think like many Americans, my life changed completely. I had been working on Africa issues. All of a sudden, I uh, had to join an Afghanistan task force. So I did that for two years, um, working to support our military efforts in Afghanistan. And then the opportunity came up to go to Iraq. And I thought, well, anything's better than uh, my cubicle. I thought dodging bullets could even beat that. So I signed up for a 90-day tour in Iraq, which turned into uh, nearly two years of uh, supporting our democracy building efforts and doing counterinsurgency analysis um, in Iraq. And that's actually what led to the experience of founding Euphrates Institute, because I had this incredible experience while there. And I had spent about a week as the only civilian and the only CIA officer in um, only female civilian and, and officer uh, with the Marines in Fallujah during the first major battle there. And I was just really overwhelmed, as one would imagine, by um, the death and destruction and the horrors of war and, and being in the midst of that battle. And a week later, I found myself just a few miles away along the banks of the Euphrates River. And I was just struck by the contrast between the calm and the beauty and the incredible peace of that flowing river, you know, this, this blue uh, purveyor of life in the middle of this parched desert. And I realized at that moment that that river also flowed right through downtown Fallujah. So you had two things going on coincidentally there. You had the beauty of this life-giving river and you had the mayhem and the death and destruction and war going on around it. And uh, I realized that I had a choice at that moment. I could either choose to focus on the symbolism of this Euphrates River, which to me at that moment symbolized the power of life over death and the power of good over evil. Or I could choose to continue to be overwhelmed and dismayed and you know, just at my wit's end about the conflict zone, about the war. And so I decided at that moment to dedicate focusing, my life to focusing on the river and what it symbolized. And what's interesting about Euphrates is that it's always had incredible symbolism. It was always the ancient boundary between the east and west, between the kingdoms of Assyria and Babylon, and between the west, between Israel. So you can look at it as a boundary between east and west, or I also like to look at, at it as a bridge, because it's that connector between those two. And so that's really the, the background. Um, that experience led to uh, my obsession with the word Euphrates, with the symbolism of that river, with that incredible experience. And so when I returned to the U.S., I decided to leave government to found an organization dedicated to showing, showing a more positive side, that there is reason to have hope, that there is good going on, even though we only hear on the news about the negative aspects of the region, of its people, of our involvement there, and to, to be a voice to actually bring that to Americans to show this picture, to show this perspective, to bring these moderates, to bring that goodness that is going on in those people, um, to be that connecting force between East and West. And so that's why we're about healing the divides between the Middle East and West.